Yo, guys, what's up? It's another episode of Schiller Learns. Listen, we're here with Charky from the Oakmont, and today I'm rocking my New York Knicks hat. You want to know why? Because we're going to be working on getting financially free and at, you know what, aspirations, maybe living in New York one day, even though I'm Canadian. Charky, thanks so much for coming uh, by here. Before we get going, do you want to give a little bit of a background about what you're doing uh, with the Oakmont and then maybe your uh, thoughts here on the ApeCoin that recently dropped? Hey, Ivan. Good afternoon. So, yeah, my name is Charlie, aka Charky Bot. I am one of the founders of the Oakmont, uh, which is a community of people who want to become financially free by basically any means necessary. And we primarily use the stock market, crypto, and NFTs to, you know, really help break those chains of the nine to five uh, workplace and you know, establish financial freedom and be able to be on podcast and buy Pokemon cards and travel the world like the way you want to. Yeah, yo, listen, that's what we love. That's <laughs> that's what we love. So uh, taking a look at ApeCoin here, we've had a crazy, crazy run. Uh, so basically, for anyone that doesn't know, at 8.30 a.m. on the 17th, of March, ApeCoin got dropped, and then shortly after that, it got listed on a whole bunch of major exchanges, uh, Binance, and then Coinbase, kind of in the middle of the day. And then, you know, it, it didn't go kind of too, too crazy in the night oh my goodness I, I was up for almost 24 hours just watching yeah. the price action of it and it went all the way up to 18 and you know at the time i was thinking about the elliott wave theory and going through stuff and i remember it dropped back down to i think like the 13 14 range and then it ended up pumping again and i was like whoa okay sweet so kind of kind of already learned some stuff but what's your what's your thoughts on what's happened so far with the ape coin I, I think you're right on and i love the fact that you're trying to adapt um the principles already but there's something that through experience and through more education, you're gonna learn. Um, so just to recap what we talked about last week, we mentioned that this um, you know, strategy theory is a five wave sequence, um, an impulsive sequence uh, moving to the upside, uh, which is immediately usually followed by a three step sequence to the downside. Um, so generally that's how stocks move, five waves up and three waves down. Now. There are a bunch of rules and there's a bunch of guidelines within the Elliott Wave Theory. One of them, uh, which is called an expanding diagonal, when the stock starts, it doesn't start in this um, very uh, tunnel. Um, if, if I draw a line here, you'll see that it's very narrow. It's like a channel, like a river moving upward. When the stock starts or a cryptocurrency or an NFT price, it doesn't move this way. It actually expands a lot wider. So let me draw you how that looks. This is only the case when a price starts on a, on a ticker and when it ends. So this is uh, wave one. Two would actually go down to about the same level as one. Three always looks the same. Now here's where it gets really tricky. Four can actually move down as low as here and then five to the upside, okay? So you'll see that this is actually a diagonal that's expanding higher, and then you have um, a similar um, wave to the bottom side here. Okay, so notice the two differences between those, all right? Um, <clears throat> so look for that in it. And if you look at eight right now, that's basically what we have already, right? Again, guys, this is a five minute chart. So if I just chart the highs and the lows here, you'll see that we have that expanding tri uh, diagonal already developed. This is the exact same shape as this one, okay? So we might be able to say that this first move was the first wave, but it might actually be down here. So we may have a one, a two, a big three. We move down to four, and now we're going to move upward to five, okay? So again, this is Elliott Wave starting off. Does that, how does that look for you, uh, Vaughn? Yeah. Okay. So question, cause I want to kind of just go back for a second. Cause I'm, <laughs> I was like following along and then I'm like, hold on, there's a lot of lines. So in the first one, you drew three separate lines. You had uh, kind of the first two that were in kind of just the, the drawing that you had there, which you're moving right now. Mm -hmm. And then you added an additional one below that. Why did you add that additional one below it? Cause I'd seen on the main one. Now you have just two instead of the three lines. Right. So here, um, the first impulsive wave is a very narrow range. So the, the top line and the bottom line um, tend to move parallel to each other. And that's how you can tell the difference. And then the corrective wave, obviously, you know, is a three wave to the downside. This down here, this pattern of five waves is an expanded diagonal. So instead of being a narrow channel, the higher end tends to range higher 
than the bottom. And this is typical of a new stock uh, price. So I think that's what we're starting to see right now with uh, Ape and obviously any new coin that may come out. Okay, interesting. Very so, interesting. Um, what we're going to talk about today. So I, I guess to start off with um, my personal opinions on Ape, um, I think that it's going to benefit from the overall positive sentiment that we're having in the market right now. I'm still a little cautious. Um, we're still at a level where I think we can go back down um, in terms of you know, uh, SPY in the stock market, um, ETH, Bitcoin, and so forth. But if it doesn't, I do think that we'll go back and probably retest um, some of these levels up here. So you can see that Abe could, could probably climb as high as $27, $28 if it continues in this trend in this short, this short, short time frame. Um, but again, there, there, there may be a lot of external factors uh, that may cause that. But um, let's jump into what, what the, the, the target of our conversation was today, which is the Fibonacci sequence, okay? Um, as, as I spoke to you a little bit earlier before, the Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers that were essentially discovered back in, in, in 1200 um, um, in, uh, in India by uh, Leonardo um, the, the BC. And um, the Fibonacci sequence, it, it's, it's the, the thought that all numbers start from zero and one. So if we actually listed uh, zero and one, just like binary code, and then we added those numbers, that sequence that you get is the Fibonacci sequence. So zero plus one makes one, one plus one makes two, one plus two makes three, and five and eight, and so forth and so forth. So all of these numbers are part of that sequence. Now, when you divide those numbers, you're going to come out with a ratio, which is known as the golden ratio, okay? That golden ratio is 1.618%. Okay, or 161.8%. Um, when you look at stocks or crypto and you're trying to figure out, well, how low is the price going to go or how high is it going to go, you use um, the Fibonacci sequence to determine the retracement or the extension. Okay, so um, there's two tools. So there's retracement, how low, and then there's extension. How high? Now, when you're trying to decide when is the best time to buy or sell, this is what you're going to use to determine that. So, um, here on TradingView, again, TradingView is a free app. Um, if you want to get um, more tools, and obviously there's a subscription, but um, let's just take a look at where this price bottomed out at in the first, um, you know, hour or so, which is around seven dollars, and then the high, which is eighteen. So if I go up here to my tools. I'm going to grab my fib retracement tool. I'm going to start at the bottom of this price, and I'm going to go all the way to the top of this price. Now, whether I extend this or, or not, it doesn't matter, but to get a clear picture, I'm going to spend, extend it all the way to the right. But this, the top line, I want to make sure that I keep it at the high, which is around $18. So I'll put that there. All right. Now, you'll see here that <clears throat> from $7 to $18, it's gone down some, some right? So this is how we determine where we think prices are going to dip. So all of these stock experts, all of these guys that consider, that consider themselves gurus on Twitter or TikTok, this is what they primarily use, okay? The very first one, the most important one is the 618, okay? Remember I said the golden ratio is 1618? So 618 correction is the first one that you want to think about. Second one is the 50% one, which is right here. And then you have 236, 786, and 382. Okay, but 618 is the first one, and then 50% is the second one. So we look at 618, 618 is right here. We haven't gotten there yet, right? But look at how strong the support was at the 50% level right here. So that to me is a very strong you know, area of support that it may, it may not break down from. Okay, so at this point, this is where I want to start setting up a trade. Um, I'm going to give myself space from right here, $14.50, to go down as low as the $12.50. So let's say a minus $2 range. But the high, if everything goes well, could be all the way up here in the $28 range, right? Going up this way. Sheesh. 
Huge. And that's a plus, let's call it, um, plus what, uh, $14? So this has a risk to reward ratio of seven to one. So I'm going to risk one to make seven. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just in terms of like what I've kind of seen on charts and seen other people talk about the, the, the support levels being kind of really, really important. So, I mean, let's say that it, you know, breaks that support level down there that you have it at with like the, yeah, the number four, um, do you then look at where it was kind of around the $11 range? And then if it breaks that kind of little area, like, do you even call that support there? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're right on. So I would, I would, if, if eight, breaks this 1264 level the next spot i would look for it is this 618 level which is um 1135 right here that would be my next level of support okay if it breaks through that then the next one is all the way down here and you'll notice that look notice how right here at this level 1132 look at how congested the price became here that's not a coincidence right up here it doesn't do that it just goes straight up same thing down here, right? Here's the, the next support level. There's a congestion of price there, right? It didn't it didn't do that here. It, it didn't bounce around here. It bounced around at those levels. So it's telling us already that those are key areas of support. So um, again, do your own diligence, all that stuff. But I would feel okay with entering a position on, on APE right now. So for people with, you know, on, on some of these different exchanges and whatnot, I'm assuming they're putting probably buy orders in around that range right now. Right. So, so they start to set areas. And, and if you look at one of the indicators that I have here, which is this volume profile, this gray cloud, the further the cloud extends to the left, the more people are buying at that price. So you'll see that if we do dip, there's a lot of people that bought here at 13, right? So as long as we don't dip it below that, they'll hold that price because they're already at break even. But if it dips below that price, there's not a lot of support down here. We could flush from 13 all the way down to 11. And that's the highest point of purchase right here. So the majority of people bought it at $11 and they're actually right there now. And if you notice too, this orange line that cuts through, this is um, the volume profiles showing you where the strongest um, level of support is for that price. So we rejected that you know, literally just 20 minutes ago. Um, so that's why we're seeing a downtrend now. So it could retrace back down to somewhere between around 14, maybe 1380, and then hopefully it'll find support. If it doesn't, again, it'll go back down to that level of 13. This um, is cool. Yeah, right. so let let me so let me I'm gonna go away from from crypto real quick just so I can show you more examples of this. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, one that I was looking at was WDC, which is Western Digital Company. The only reason why I chose it is because I don't chart it a lot. Uh, again, always start with the one day chart, but I just wanted to pull up some examples for you guys so that we can see um, what that looks like, right? So a little cheesy back there. So remember that the first thing you want to do is is draw your level. So you see right now, I'm adjusting my chart. I'm trying to see as many highs and lows as possible. And you can see one right here, one right here, one right here. So take the line chart and just draw lines on those recent support levels. Okay. Let's call that one the same one. So here we are sitting in this range and we've been in this range basically since 2019 for Western Digital, right? So let's get, get in a little closer now. So getting a little closer, See, there's another one here, there's one here, and then that's pretty much it, right? So what we want to start with is the highs and lows and, and determining how much they've corrected, right? So we can call this here on January 2020 a high, right? We'll put an H there. And then this is another high here. And then we have one significant low here, which is the crash of, of uh, March 2020. So what I would do right away is go from this low of March to this high of June 2021 using a Fibonacci retracement. And I want to see where we are in comparison to that chart. So go ahead and go to your trading view, grab that Fibonacci retracement, start at the bottom of the low, extend it all the way up to the high, and we're just going to roll it all over so we can get a better picture. All right. And what do you know? The 618 level 
is where we stopped at recently. Right. So if I can for a second, kind of to the left, kind of a, a big area of support where on the right there where you just had it, it went like right through the support. It didn't even stop, but then it bounced. So does that mean that it was just like a massive sell off right then that was like more than it or, or how would you read that? I mean, everything comes with its, you know, um, efficiency rates, right? So nothing's perfect. Right, um, right. I mean, even these strategies are going to be in the 80 to 90% in terms of success levels. There are um, abnormalities that happen, right? There's um, sudden wars or COVID happens. All of this stuff predicts movements, but it's up to us to decide when that happens. So the challenge isn't when are we going to retest it? I mean, sorry, if we're going to retest it, the challenge is what, how to know when we're going to retest it. Um, so like you said, you know, we, we, we touch these levels and we bounce off. So all we have to do as traders is just wait. Just wait for that that area to, to be support. And if it doesn't work, it fails, then we move on to the next one. So with, with this chart, if I can just mm -hmm. ask the the high point here, it looks like it's really struggling to get anywhere near that again. So is this something that you look at as, OK, this is a dip or that like fundamentally I'm kind of waiting because it doesn't look like it's going to hit all time highs anytime soon. Right. So what I would do from here is I start to use Elliott wave, right? So I have a significant low here and a significant high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find five waves in here. So that's where Elliott wave comes in. And again, we didn't go over this last time. I didn't give you all of the rules. But there are a couple of rules within Elliott Wave. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball draw this out and let's see if it makes sense. So zero will start down here. There's a first initial move upward, right? Either here or here. You, you pick a spot, right? That could be wave one. Then we retrace down, right, to wave two. That's the bottom. And then you see this very impulsive and strong wave up. And that's a good indication of a wave three. Well, we marked that there. And then now we're correcting downward. Now, one of the rules of Elliott wave is that this wave four cannot cross below wave one. Okay, that's a rule, not a guideline. So Elliott wave has rules. So wave four cannot dip below wave one. Well, here we are down here. You can see that I'm well below the wave one. So it broke that rule already. So it means that something else may be going on. But for now, we'll just, we'll just play this by ear. If this goes well, we'll be back up to new highs. Okay, so now how do I know if this part of the chart was correct? It's one, two, three. Now the wave three in relationship to wave one will always be equal or greater than wave one. Okay, so the distance between here and here, uh, sorry, between here and here will always be greater than, the, than, than this distance. And you can tell it is. So we use Fibonacci to determine how high that level is. Now, take a guess, um, Vaughn, how much did this wave three extend compared to wave one? What would you guess as far as percentage wise? How much more did it go up? I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, I muted. Is it like 70%? Because it seems like that that small portion is kind of that, but like the other part looks like almost like triple to quadruple the, the length. So let's take a look. So we're going to grab our Fibonacci, this time extension tool. Now, first time we did retracement, but we want to know how much higher it went, right? So we're going to choose the extension uh, tool. Now I'm going to measure the bottom of that first wave, the top of the first wave. Now I'm going to drag it down to the bottom of the second wave. Okay, I'm going to extend this, All right? So you'll see here that it stopped basically at around the 1618 level, which is, according to our, our, our Fibonacci levels, the golden ratio. Look at how it failed to break above that level there. And you'll see that back here, that it was the same level, the 1618. So that $70 range for WDC is very strong. And guess what? Look forward to January of this year. Again, we return to that level and we fail. Okay. Right. So that tells me that we're not in a in a upwards trend. We're not in a in a bullish upward trend. We are actually in more of a flat trend. Um, so we you know grab these lines here and we're gonna try to 
look at how that works out here. And then the same thing down here. Okay, so we may see something for Western Digital like this slowly creeping up over time. And that's that's how you use Fibonacci and that's how you break it down. Yo, listen, this is this stuff's kind of cool, not gonna lie. And I mean, like in, in terms of like sayings or something, right? Like I, I've heard something that's said before, and this doesn't necessarily have to do with Fibonacci sequence, but somebody's saying, you know, like the higher the base in terms of, you know, a stock crypto that's kind of like, you know, flatlined in a way. Um, and if it's, you know, consolidating, the the longer that it's consolidated, the higher they could end up going for, you know, different kind of things for Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, or in general, is there any kind of sayings or kind of like simple things that you can reference to make yourself remember certain things? Well, the, the good thing about Elliott Wave is that it has very specific rules um, within there. Um, I mentioned one earlier that Wave uh, 4 cannot dip below Wave 5. So if, if, if I see something like this, right, where uh, we have a Wave 1 with a correction 2 and then a long extension 3, I'm going to put my support at at least the last high of that level 1 there. Um, so that's one thing that you can take a look at. Um, in terms of retracement, wave two will almost always be deeper than wave four. And you have to think about this psycholo psychologically. And I actually wanted to bring you up as an example, right? Um, when you first started your projects with Shot to the Moon and Schiller Burst and everything that you do, the first time you did it, you kind of went into it, maybe not knowing everything, and, and you just gave it your all, right? And then you hit a wall. You hit a wall and you say, you know what? I don't think I'm good enough to do this. I don't think I got it. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna live to, to give up or to quit, right? You get very close to zero, and then you have like a eureka moment where you figure things out. <laughs> and boom, you take off, right? You take off and 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 you go full steam ahead, and now you 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 run into something great, and then you have another level. Well, you're not gonna dip as low as you did last time because you already went through that. You already went through that phase of I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. So you're not going to consolidate as deep. And again, this is all having to do with our, our psychological thinking, and we take it all into the stock market. Um, so I guess to wrap up, let's let's look at Bitcoin, since I know crypto is, is the big thing right now, obviously. And with Ape um, trying to break through, we worked on this last time where we're predicting this five waves up. We are very well on our way up, but I wanted to share something with you that I did afterwards. So I went back and looked at it. So we predicted a wave one, uh, sorry, a wave three of a wave three. So remember that within our waves, you know, one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, within there, you can find um, even more waves. So within here, it's one, two, three, four, five. So I feel like we're somewhere in here in terms of uh, Bitcoin. We have this one up, two down, and then we had this correction upward down two, and now we're starting to break to the upside. And if you look, I drew this orange line, I think about a day and a half ago, um, and, and this is exactly where we're, where we're at right now. Um, so I do think that we probably consolidate down to around 40,000 for Bitcoin before ultimately making the move up. So Again, we set these targets, we set these levels, these scenarios, and if the numbers match and make sense, then, then we go with it. And if they don't, then we, we change course. And that's okay. No, and that's okay. <laughs> and that's okay. Listen, Sharky, this has been an absolute blast. Every time we do it, I feel like I learned something new. Guys, once again, if you're interested in becoming financially free, if you're wanting to learn a little bit about crypto, a little bit about stocks, and a little bit, you know, about finance in general, if you want to check them out at the Oakmont on Twitter, again, they do actually have an NFT. So something that I, I really enjoy and one of the reasons why I'm highlighting them is the fact that, you know, we see this kind of entire ecosystem really booming. And for that, we're going to have a lot of traditional we'll call it uh, companies enter the space and have their NFTs done in a membership form and Sharky's you know been at the forefront of doing that with the Oakmont and love learning these lessons and I hope you guys enjoy it too Sharky any kind of final things you want to mention here about the Oakmont um you know I'm just really you know excited about being able to help people and um <clears throat> one of the things that I'm, I'm doing right now is I'm actually providing one-on-one -on -one mentorship to all token holders that are coming in so if you guys want a session like what I'm doing right now with Vaughn 
and you have your own questions because I know a lot of people are self-conscious and they don't want to ask things in a Discord chat or a YouTube chat. Um, feel free to book me um, once you come into the server for a session and, and we can really get into you know, what it is it that you need to break through. And again, it's all psychological. It's all about just breaking your trends. Uh, you don't have to have a ton of money. You know, I grew up dirt poor on the streets of Boyle Heights here in, in LA. Um, and, and you can really make that change, but you have to be the one to push it. Yeah, love it. All right, Cherokee, I guess we'll see you again next week. Thank you very much. See you soon.